In this tutorial video, I'll be showing you how to create a Discord music bot using Python. The bot will have features such as queuing, pausing, skipping, and a lot more. Before we start the video, please note that I will be assuming you have Python installed already and have at least some Python programming experience, and that you watched the Discord setup video before watching this one. Please also remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out my other social media to see what other projects I'm currently working on. Also, check out my Patreon account if you like the videos and would like to support me. Enough with introductions. Let's go create a Discord music bot. It's a good idea to download FFmpeg before we do anything else because we're going to be using FFmpeg to stream the audio to Discord. So let's go to the page. Let's go to download. And then under Windows, we're going to go to gian.dev. Once we're on this page, I'm going to download the essentials here. You can see the file has .7z as the file extension, which means it's a zipped folder. Now, my computer can already extract the folder, but there's a chance that you might be getting issues. So if you can't seem to extract, then you should try and download 7-zip or WinZip. But anyway, like I said, my computer can already extract this. So I'm going to drag it to desktop. I'm going to close this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to extract all and then extract. Once that's done, we have it open. And then I'm going to open the Discord bot folder, which is the entire project we've been making. And then inside of FFmpeg, I'm going to drag this bin folder inside of our Discord bot project. Now, this bin folder contains three exe files, but I'm pretty sure we're only going to be using the top one. But just in case, I'm still going to keep the bottom two here. I'm going to be a bit extra and I'm going to create another folder, which is called FFmpeg. I'm going to drag these files here. And the reason I'm doing this is because in a bunch of programs, or applications, people usually have a bin folder where all of the executable files go. So like the .exe files. And there's a chance that you might add to this project in the future. And there's also a chance that you might get a bunch of these bin folders that you need. So then inside of your bin folder, it's probably going to look a bit ugly and messy if there's a bunch of .exe files in this entire folder. So I'm just going to categorize them by a subfolder so that in the future we can add more folders here if we want to. I'm going to open Visual Studio Code and then I'm going to drag this folder here. And you can also go ahead actually and delete this folder and the extracted one as well. Now there's one last thing I want to do before we can start coding and that's clicking this button here at the bottom and then going to terminal because we want to download another library. So pip install yt-dlp. It's going to say I've already installed it. Yep, there we go but you should go ahead and install that because we're going to be using it to search for the user's song. So the basic workflow is going to be a user requests a song in Discord, and then our bot is going to use YTDLP to search for that song on YouTube and create a stream of it. FFmpeg is then going to use that stream to play the audio on Discord. So that's the gist of it. We can close this by clicking the trash icon here, kill terminal. And now we can start coding. Now that we have FFmpeg set up and ready to go, we can write our first bit of code, which will be the play command. We will be using slash commands, of course. So the structure of our command will be slash play and then our search query. For example, slash play, never going to give you up. Let's create the structure and definition for the command by using the command decorator. The command will have one parameter, which will be the search query. Now that our command is defined, we can provide the implementation. The first thing we want to do before the bot can play anything is to let Discord know that this command might take a while to execute. By default, we have about three seconds before the command is aborted. And downloading music might take slightly longer than that. So let's notify Discord that we might take longer than three seconds. We do this by typing await interaction.response.defer. We should then definitely get the voice channel that the user is currently in. So type voice channel equals interaction.user.voice.channel. But what if the user wasn't in any voice channel? Don't worry, we'll check if that's the case by typing if voice channel is none. Then send a message message notifying the user to join a voice channel and return, since we don't want to execute any more code after this. If the voice channel turned out to be legit, we should then check if the bot itself is already inside of a voice channel by retrieving the voice client of the bot in the current server. A voice client is basically an entity that can interact with voice channels in Discord. So if the bot has a voice client, then it means the bot is connected to a voice channel. If not, then we should make the bot join. The following code does exactly that for us. It checks if voice client is none, meaning it has to connect. Just 
remember to also reset voice client to be the new instance. But if the bot is connected, we should make sure it's in the same channel as the user that sent the slash play command. So we then say voice client dot move to and then the voice channel we retrieved above. We've written a good amount of code now and we're ready to start playing a song, but there's one problem. How do we actually play something? For this, we'll use two things. Firstly, FFmpeg. Secondly, we'll need a way to somehow search for the user's song request on the internet, specifically on YouTube. For this, we're going to use a library called YTDLP. I'll import it inside of our project. Back in our play command, we can specify the settings or options that we'd like to use when we do the actual search query. So I'll paste the options I've selected and go through each one. If you want to choose your own options, feel free to look at the YTDLP documentation. I'll leave a link in the description. The first option specifies that we're only interested in the audio of our search and to specifically download our audio using 96 kilobits per second or less. If it can't find such audio, it will use the best audio. The second option will exclude all playlists from our search. The third and fourth options will basically just omit some information from our download that we're not interested in to hopefully speed up and simplify our download. We can then go ahead and construct our search query that's going to be used on YouTube to search for our song. We'll type query equals and then in quotations yt search colon one plus the song query. The reason we add the yt search one is so that the search will only look for the top result. You can change the number if you want but for our bot it will be unnecessary because we'll only be using the first result that comes up in our search. The next step is to use the options to search for the song and I'm going to do it in a separate function because I want the function to be asynchronous meaning it runs at the same time as our other code. The reason for this is because when we actually implement a queue system and we add songs to the queue, YTDLP is going to download songs while other songs are playing and this might cause some bad audio quality on the currently playing song so that's why I'm going to make the actual search a separate function that runs in the background. At the very top I'll import async.io so that we can perform asynchronous operations. I'm going to paste the two functions we'll use to search our song near the top of our project and then I'll explain what they do. First of all I think it's important to note that the bottom function extract is the one doing all the search work and the top function search ytdlp as sync is the one handling the concurrent execution of things. The top function will retrieve the current loop that's executing and then it will create a separate thread from this loop that executes on its own. The thread will run the bottom function that actually does the YouTube search for the audio. Inside of it we pass our ytdlp options and then perform the search. The false value here is to specify that we don't want to download the song, we're only interested in streaming it. Then we extract the information and return it to the top function which which then returns it to wherever we call the function. Now that the function is written, we'll go back to our play command and retrieve the result of our search query and store it in a variable called results. After this, we can get the tracks. These will be the actual songs. We'll probably have to check the case where no search results come up, so we can do that by checking if tracks is none. And if that's the case, send a message on Discord notifying the user that their search came back empty. To get the first track, and really the only track because of the query limiting here, we'll use index zero on tracks. The audio you URL that FFmpeg is going to use to stream the music is stored inside of the dictionary using the URL key and the title we can retrieve like this. The title here stores the actual title of the audio that's been downloaded. So our search is done and we've downloaded the requested song but how do we actually play it? Well we have to specify some FFmpeg options first similar to how we did the YTDLP options. Then we have to create a source for the audio that Discord can use to play it and then finally we can use the voice client to play the audio. So firstly here are the FFmpeg options that I'll be using. The before options section mainly deals with how the audio might deal with connectivity issues or reconnection behavior. The first one, reconnect one, means that the bot will try to reconnect to the audio source if connection was lost. The second is the same as the first but for streamed media, which is what we're actually using but I decided to include both anyway. The max delay here is the maximum delay in seconds between reconnection attempts. Then there's the main FFmpeg options. Dash VN disables video process processing. Dash C colon A lib opus specifies that we want to use the opus codec to encode audio streams, which is a modern and efficient audio codec. This part sets the audio bitrate to 96 kilobits per second. Then we can create the source for our audio that Discord can use. We'll be using FFmpeg opus audio where we'll pass the URL of the audio, the FFmpeg options, as well as specifying the path to the FFmpeg.exe we downloaded at the very start of the video, which will be inside of bin slash FFmpeg. Now that that's done, you can play the audio using voice client.play and then passing the source. Before testing the bot, it's important to note that slash commands don't always appear on servers immediately. 
it might take up to an hour even. So don't worry if your command isn't visible yet. To make it instantly appear, you need to get the server's ID first. So let's add a temporary event handler that will print the server's ID whenever a message gets sent. Let's run the bot and send a message. In our terminal, the server's ID is now displayed. So we can copy it and store it in a variable at the very top of our code. You can then delete the event handler. Okay, so I had to come back and say some stuff because there was a mistake in the video. We have the guild ID now that we're going to use for the test server. There's still three things we have to do to make the bot work. The first one is to set the test guild here in the onready event. So add this line of code, then set the guild parameter to test guild. So we'll make sure that all the slash commands you have sync in that server. And once you're done testing, you can take away this line of code and also take away this parameter right here. And then of course you also don't need this one anymore. The other thing, which wasn't giving issues before, but for some reason is now, we have to actually install another library. So do this, pip install pynacl, and then press enter. I'm pretty sure it's because this project's in a virtual environment. And when I was testing before, I wasn't using a virtual environment, so it could be that. You can click the trash icon. The last thing is actually something that we have to do in Discord. I'm going to kick the bot because I'm going to re-invite it in the Discord developer portal. So boom, and then applications. The reason is, and then I'm going to go to the tutorial bot. The reason is I have, the reason is I invited the bot with the wrong permissions or the wrong scopes, sorry. So we need, where is it? Obviously we need bot, but we also need applications.commands. There we go. I, for some reason, didn't check that, but make sure to check that. And then it supports slash commands. I'm then going to copy the link, go to a new tab and paste. And then I'm going to go to Discord and invite the bot to test server. There we go. Authorize. Oh, there we go. I'm human. And there we go. The bot's here. All right, and that should be all you have to do. If we run the bot and go to Discord, we can join a voice channel and type slash play and then our query, then press enter. You might have to wait a second for the audio to download, but after a few seconds, it should start playing your song. Congratulations if you've gotten everything to work up until this point. In a sense, we've already created the most basic form of a music bot in Discord. But obviously, some more features would be nice. So before adding pause, skip, and all of that, let's focus on a queuing system. For the queuing system, I'm going to make use of Python dictionaries and a queue data structure. What I plan on doing is to use the dictionary to store the server IDs as the keys and the actual music queues as the values. So at the very top, I'll import DQ from collections, which will give us the queue, and then I'll define a dictionary here called song queues, which will store the queues of all the individual servers. Inside the play command, we can copy the ffmpeg code as well as the source code because we want to move this to another function. We'll call this function play next song, and it'll take in a voice client, a guild ID, and a channel. This function will handle the logic for when the next song should play. So what will happen is we'll end up calling this function every time a song ends and another is ready to play. So we'll say if there's songs contained in the song queues dictionary for the given server ID, create the audio URL and the title from the dictionary. Our dictionary will store each song's audio URL as well as the title. We can then paste the ffmpeg options as well as the source creation code here. The next step is to play the song. So we'll say voice client play. Here's where we have to do some thinking. This play function has a parameter called after where we can pass a function that should run after a song has ended. You'd expect us to pass the function we've just made so that the bot can check the queue again. There's a slight issue with this, unfortunately. The after parameter can't send its own arguments to the function we specify. And this is important because as you can see at the top here, we have three parameters that we need to pass and we can't pass any of them into the function inside of the after parameter. So here's what we'll do. Above this, we'll create another function called after play that takes error as a parameter. This is essential because the after parameter function needs to have one parameter, which will be the error message. Inside of the function, we'll display a message if an error occurred. And more importantly, we'll call the play next song function from here. This line is telling our bot to run the play 
play next song function synchronously from the bot's event loop. Our after parameter can then run this function after a song has ended. The reason we declared the function inside of the same function we were busy with is so that it has access to the voice client, guild ID, and channel arguments. We can then use a syncio.create task to asynchronously send a message to the Discord channel saying that the next song is playing. We'll also have an else statement here at the bottom to disconnect the bot if there's no songs and to reset the song queues dictionary for the given server. This function will correctly play the next song in a queue, but we haven't really done the logic for queuing the songs yet. So let's do that. In the play command, we can take away all of this and then get the guild ID as a string because we'll obviously be using this as the key in the dictionary. Then we'll check if this specific server has a queue ready and if not, then create one. After this, we can add the song to the queue and we do it using the append function to add it to the queue structure in the dictionary. We can then use an if else statement to check if there's a song currently busy. And if so, just send a message telling the user that the song was added to the queue. Otherwise, tell the user that the song is now playing and then call the function we created below. That should be all the code for the queue logic, but to test it, we might as well add the skip command. I'll paste the whole command here. And really the only thing to take away from this is that here it checks to see if there's something playing, similar to the check we did in the play command. And then it stops the music if there's something playing. This will trigger the function we set in the after parameter. So basically the play next song function. For our music bot, we're going to add three more features. These will be pause, resume, and stop. I'm going to paste all of them one by one and then explain. Luckily, they aren't too long, so it should be easy. The first one will be pause which will check if the user is in a voice channel and whether or not something is playing. After we've confirmed that there is in fact a song playing, we'll call voiceclient.pause to pause the currently playing audio. Pretty simple function and every pause feature needs a resume feature. So let's go ahead and paste that. The resume feature is basically an exact copy of the pause feature, except we're just resuming obviously by typing voiceclient.resume. The last function will be called stop and it will stop the entire voice client altogether and and clear the queue. This first part makes sure that the voice client is connected to a channel. After that, the following chunk of code clears the entire queue for the given server by using the dot clear function. The next step is to stop the audio from playing and then ultimately disconnect the voice client from the channel. You can then optionally send a message notifying the user. We've covered a huge amount of code in this single video, so let's go ahead and make sure it even works. Okay, so I made a few mistakes in the stop command. It takes a while to complete all of its tasks, so we once again have to use the response.defer method. I then changed all of the messages being sent to use the followup.send method. And then the last thing I did was switch these two around, which I'm not too sure why that works, but it works a lot better than if disconnect if it disconnected first and then sent a message. I'm gonna run and then we're gonna go to Discord. I'm already in a voice channel here. I'm gonna do slash play vine boom 10 hours but the silence one was really stupid i, I don't i don't want that one i want one which consistently plays vine boom because i want to hear if the bot's working okay so it does take a second just by the way okay there we go that's exactly what i wanted okay might take a second for this one to download but it you could hear it was working there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna play to add some more things to the queue. I'm gonna do fart sounds, just because. And while we're at it, I'm gonna do test the pause. So let's test pause. And just by the way, it's been added to queue now, so that's good. And it's been paused, so that's great. I'm then gonna do resume. Okay, perfect, and then I'm gonna do skip. There we go, perfect. And then the last one I'm gonna do stop. There we go, everything works, perfect. That's it for the Discord music bot. Thanks so much for watching. I hope the video helped. Please remember to like the video and subscribe. Also check out my other social media and consider supporting the channel on my Patreon account. It would mean a lot. Thanks again and I'll see everyone in the next video.